In this edition of the Parliament Report, Greg Christie defends OCG's position to probe sale of state-owned assets. Controversy stirs over divestment of Negro land by the UDC and the critical component of health sector in tatters. Contractor General Greg Christie told the Parliamentary Committee on October 12 that his office was prepared to take the government to court on the issue of his jurisdiction to monitor and probe the acquisition and sale of state-owned assets. Christie said he has been challenged more than once in recent times by an opinion from the Attorney General that his office had no jurisdiction in the matter. Refusing to accept that opinion, Christie said that until the Contractor General Act was amended, the issue of his jurisdiction in relation to the sale of government assets remained unchanged. He was invited by the Public Administration and Appropriations Committee, the PAAC of Parliament, to address administrative and other issues that impact the operation of his office. Christie stressed that under his watch, the OCG would continue to monitor and investigate at will any transaction involving divestment of government assets without fear or favor. The head of the contract oversight body said he found it strange that although the government was aware that his office monitor and investigate the divestment of state-owned assets, in particular cases, the OCG has faced strong resistance. In his annual report, which was sent to Parliament recently, Christie used four pages of his voluminous document to tackle the issue. He declared in the report, We are prepared to go to court with the government to defend our position on this. That's how strongly I feel about it. The sale of a 23-acre prime beachfront property at Little Bloody Bay in Negrel, Westmoreland, by the Urban Development Corporation, the UDC, for an amount significantly lower than its forced sale value, has prompted a parliamentary committee to summon the agency to explain the disparity. Chairman of Parliament's Public Administration and Appropriations Committee, PAAC, Dr. Wicker McNeil, says the committee had raised questions about the impending sale two years ago, but had heard nothing until the sale had been completed. Little Bloody Bay, which is a stone's throw away from two large hotel chains, was sold to a housing developer. Dr. McNeil says the PAAC wants to know how the final price was determined and how many persons tendered. Information reaching the Gleaner is that the property was valued at $800 million, with a forced sale price upwards of $650 million. However, a second evaluation brought the price down to $400 million, with a declaration that a section of the property was a fish sanctuary and could not be disturbed. The forced sale recommended price for that valuation was $380 million. At its October 12 meeting, the PAAC said it would issue an invitation to the UDC to appear before the committee, which has, as part of its remit, the monitoring of expenditure in government. The staunchest critic of the committee's announced intention was Dr. St. Aubin Bartlett, the only one of eight government members present at the meeting. Five opposition members were also present. Dr. Bartlett asked whether it was in the committee's re remit to question the sale of a property by a government agency. He queried, where in our terms of re reference are we given that right to do so? Rushing to remind Bartlett of the committee's terms of reference, opposition member Dr. Maurice Guy read a section of the standing orders which outlined the committee's remit. Dr. Guy pointed out that the committee's terms of reference allowed it to inquire into the administration of government to determine hindrances to efficiencies and to make recommendations to government for improvements of public administration. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Jean Dixon, has admitted that a critical component of the public health sector is in tatters with more than 800 pieces of medical equipment in half of the country's health facilities in a state of disrepair. Dixon told Parliament's Public Accounts Committee, the PAC, that an assessment of about 50% of the total public health institutions had shown that a significant number of medical equipment was non-functional. Describing the findings as alarming, Dixon argued that there has been a serious breach in the maintenance schedule for these pieces of equipment. In another surprising revelation, 
the permanent secretary conceded that the hospitals do not currently maintain an inventory of orthopedic supplies and other appliances. Committee member Dr. Maurice Guy had raised the concern that patients sometimes stayed in hospitals for weeks, awaiting orthopedic supplies that were not available in the facility. Responding to the concern, Dixon said the ministry was aware of these challenges and had made a list of the items that were used most frequently and was seeking to purchase supplies from the Cuban government under a technical cooperation agreement. This has been another edition of the Parliament Report. Join us next time when we present another bulletin. Until then, I'm Edmund Campbell saying, what good?